Hello everybody, it's Fu here. I've been working on some really cool teams and today we have a Grafii team. This is a Pokemon that I've been really looking forward to using because it is our first Poison Normal type and it's our first Poison type with a Prankster ability. Both of these things are things I've been waiting for. So I really, really like the potential for this Pokemon. The team I built is all around its signature move Doodle, which copies one of the opponent's abilities for both Grafii and its ally, meaning that it's a really good way to change your ally's ability. Unlike Skill Swap, Doodle won't be scuppered by redirection. So if you try to skill swap your partner and the opponent has a follow me or rage powder Pokemon, then that skill swap isn't gonna go to the right target. So Doodle kind of solves that. So this is the team that I came up with. There are two main recipients of Doodles. The first one is obviously Slacking, who is crying out for its ability to be removed. Its stat profile is absolutely insane. So it's actually really, really fun to build around because you can make it really strong and fast or you can make it very bulky, which is what I've done, and then give it bulk up and slack off to make sure that it stays around, can boost up its offenses and do massive damage with just Facade and Shadow Claw. The other recipient of Doodles is Toad Scrawl, a complete weirdo of a Pokemon who I absolutely love. Toad Scrawl has Tentacruel's stat spread, meaning it's very specially defensive with good speed, but it's got pretty poor physical bulk and it's not very strong offensively. Toad School is a grass ground type with an amazing utility move pool. It can have Spore, Rage Powder, and Trick Room all on one set, which is really amazing. But its big drawback is its ability, Mycelium Might. It means that it will always move last within its priority bracket, so its spores will be the slowest in the game, regardless of if you're in Trick Room or outside of Trick Room, which really, really sucks, considering that this Pokemon has the highest speed stat of any Pokemon that get access to Spore. The benefit of Mycelium Might is that Toad School's utility moves ignore abilities, which is pretty cool because you can put Goldengo and Garganacle to sleep, but considering that this ability is a weaker version of Mold Breaker and comes with a massive drawback, it's a pretty annoying ability. But with this team, we can try to doodle to remove Toad School's ability, meaning that it can have very fast spores. So this Toad School is max speed to outspeed so many Pokemon and get spores on them before they can attack. Also, having fast earth power is pretty neat because you can do good damage to things like Arcanine and Goldengo before they can get an attack off. The rest of the Pokemon on the team are generally set up Pokemon to take advantage of Toad School's Spore, and Rotom and Tyranitar give you a much better matchup into Murkrow, which is a common Haze user. And when this team has so many setup Pokemon, it's nice to have a good matchup against Murkrow and Haze. That's a high level concept of the team, but let's get into some battles so that you can see how it works. And then I'll talk about some very specific matchups that you need to be aware of. So in this first match, my opponent is going to lead with a massive looking Arcanine and a tiny looking Grimmsnarl. It's strange proportions going on there. And I lead with my Grafai and my Slacking, which is generally the lead I like to go with if I think I can get the Slacking combo off. So they do unfortunately get an Intimidate on both of my Pokemon, but I'm hoping to get this Doodle off to remove Slacking's ability because that would really help me with this matchup. So I've gone for the Doodle into the Arcanine. The opponent goes for a Fake Out, but I have Covert Cloak on my Grafii, which means I can ignore the flinch for Fake Out, which is huge because that allows me to get this Intimidate off and it will work for Grafii, so I can drop the Grimmsnarl and Arcanine's uh, attack stats with the Intimidate, and then I can remove Slacken's Truant and get the Intimidate, so that I can Intimidate both of the opponent's Pokemon again in the same turn. So they're both at minus two attack, they've got absolutely no offensive pressure here. The opponent was hoping to fake out flinch my Grafii and take me out with a Flare Blitz, but because of the double Intimidate, that Flare Blitz does absolutely nothing, and I get a bulk up with my Slacking to boost my attack, and my defense so that Slacking will be taking zero damage from either of these Pokemon. On this turn, I can do whatever I want, really. I'm in a very commanding position because my opponent has no offensive presence. So I'm going to go for a Super Fang into the Grimmsnarl and just try to set up, set up again as the opponent just cancels the battle. So that first one is showing you how intimidating just Slacking losing its ability can be, but also how cool Doodle can be if you get, manage to copy the right ability you can do some real damage. So the opponent knew that they were in such a poor position there and there wasn't much coming back from it because slacking was so dominant that they just forfeited at that point. I'll show you some proper battles now where we actually get a bit more gameplay. So in this next battle, my opponent is going to lead with Dragonite and Grimmsnarl. 
These two are pretty scary. Dragonite's extreme speed is super threatening in these matchups. I have my Grafai and Slacking, and they don't actually try to fake me out this turn, which obviously would have worked because of my Covert Cloak, as I can copy Multiscale, which is a pretty nice ability to copy. It means that the first hit that either of my two Pokemon will take will do very little damage because of the Multiscale. And it's also nice to confirm Dragonite's ability being Multiscale too, so I need to know that my uh, any attacks in, that go into it when it's at full HP will do less damage. I'm able to get my Bulk Up off, which is nice, the opponent's got Reflect, meaning that my damage into them will be reduced, and then they're going for Dragon Dances. Um, but I'm kind of in a better position here because I can keep increasing my attack and defense, while the opponent's Dragon Dances will only increase their attack. Their defense isn't going any higher other than the uh, Reflect that's been set up. So now, right now, I'm going to go for a Super Fang into the Dragonite to break its multi-scale. Super Fang isn't affected by multi-scale, so I'm able to do half of their HP. And I'm hoping that with all of these boosts on my slacking, I'm going to be able to take out the uh, Dragonite with my uh, with my combo of Super Fang and uh, Facade. Right now, the Grim Snarl goes for a Prankster Parting Shot. So I'm now at plus one attack instead of plus two attack on my slacking. So that's important to bear in mind. As the opponent's Dragonite roosts, which is kind of okay, but also kind of annoying because it means that they're back at multi-scale. So I need to make sure that I can break that multi-scale. But they've brought in they've brought in here their Skeledurge, which is a really interesting Pokemon to bring in because I can actually doodle that and get unaware. And Unaware is such an amazing ability to copy because it means that the Dragonite's attack boosts with Facade, I mean with Dragon Dance, will do absolutely nothing. Like, that, I completely ignore these attack boosts. And Skeledurge generally runs Torch Song to boost its special attack. And again, that won't be doing anything because raising its special attack will be ignored by Unaware. So this opponent has given me the gift of unaware. Even though my slacking had already lost its truants, it was well worth me trying to copy that ability. So I'm in a reasonable position here, and the opponents just burned me, which is amazing because you've seen that I'm going for facade. Facade actually gets double power when you have a, a, a status active. So I'm able to go for the Super Fang just to make sure that that multi scale is broken, and my facade is easily able to take out the Dragonite now that I've got the burn boost, which is fantastic. The one thing I do need to uh, bear in mind is that the only way I have to hit the Skeledurge is with Shadow Claw, and that won't have like the burn damage boost. I will I will have a damage reduction because of the burn, so that's something to bear in mind. The opponent's now bringing in Grimmsnarl so that they can try to get some attack drops onto my slacking, which is kind of fine. Um, because obviously I'm looking at a Skeledurge, which is unaware, so any stat changes on my slacking are going to be ignored anyway. I just need to be make sure that I can basically take out everything around the Skeledurge, and then I will concentrate on taking out the Skeledurge itself. The Grimmsnarl switches out to a Meowskarada. I was double targeting the Grimmsnarl, so I get to Super Fang Facade into the Meowskarada and take that out very easily as the Skeledurge is continuing to go for Torch Song. So you can see that its special attack is rising and rising, but it's not doing any more damage because it's given me unaware. So this Skeledurge is its own worst enemy at the moment because it's given away its amazing ability. I can go for another Super Fang into the Grimmsnarl as I tried to do last time and just go for a Slack Off with my Slacking. I'm getting relatively low health. And uh, with all my special defense investment, I'm able to take these Torch Songs and the burn damage and recover off relatively easily. And the opposing Grimmsnarl is trying to get damage into Grafire with its Spirit Break, uh, but I resist that because of my Poison Typing. I've got max HP, so that's not going to be doing too much damage. Just going to go for another Super Fang into Grimmsnarl. It's a relatively bulky Pokemon, so getting this as low as possible before I go for a Facade into it is really the play that I want to make. They're going for another Torch Song into my Slacking. I have to be careful here because both of my Pokemon do have Unaware, but as soon as these Pokemon go down, none of the rest of my Pokemon have Unaware, and this Skeledurge is going to be sitting at a very high special attack stat with all of the boosts that it's getting from Torch Song. So I need to be very careful about this. So now the Grimmsnarl is setting up a Reflect, which has already worn off, and it's actually doing a lot of work, or it will be doing a lot of work for them because the Unaware 
um, Skeletor Dirge will not be, will ignore any uh, bulk up boost that I can get, and also I can only hit it with Shadow Claw, not Facade, so the burn is really going to reduce my damage output. So it's a little bit worrying about how I'm going to deal with this Skeletor Dirge. It's doing a lot of damage, well, it's doing a reasonable amount of damage with its Torch Song, it's not getting any more. I'm able to eat my Ayapapa Berry with my slacking here, so I actually don't uh, don't need to slack off straight away if I don't want to. I would be able to take another Torch Song if I wanted to. Um, I'm going for a Super Fang here with my Grafai because I'm actually quite worried about switching into anything else. If the opponent targets a Torch Song into my Grafai slot, uh, as I switch, it will be doing a lot of damage because they're pretty much at max special attack at this stage. So that's really, really scary. Anything else in the back would take a ton from a max max boosted Skeletor Dirge. Um, but it seems as though they are continuing to target into my slacking. With the burn damage and the torch song damage, I'm almost forced to slack off. It's almost every turn. They're doing maybe about... 30 to 40% to me each turn, and uh, if I don't slack off, then I need to make sure I'm above like 70-ish percent of HP, um, which is quite hard to, to maintain. So I slack off with my slacking here and switch into my Tyranitar, hoping that they don't target into my Fire slot this turn, which they don't. And I think with this special attack boost, I think that their um, Skeletor might be max special attack right now, so that's kind of worrying. I have set up Sand, which boosts my Tyranitar's special defense, which is very nice, but it also means that my slacking is taking more residual damage, so with the Burn and the Sand and the Torch Song damage, um, I'm going to struggle with keeping all the damage off slacking right now. Not that slacking is doing the most damage into Skeletor because it is burned. I am able to get a single target Rock Slide off into that Skeletor Dirge to do as much damage as possible. Unfortunately, it doesn't flinch, uh, but Tyranitar is actually able to take that Torch Song pretty nicely. It might be able to take another one too. So I'm in a pretty good position here. I do have Crunch on my Tyranitar too, so I think that this game is pretty much sealed up because there's not a chance that I will miss with uh, Rock Slide. So this is looking pretty good right now. I can go for the Shadow Claw and the Crunch just to seal up this game. That Shadow Claw did a lot of damage, so it was a crit, that's why. And we can go for the Crunch, take out the Skeletor Dirge. That end game was pretty tight. If they had burned my uh, Tyranitar on that turn, then it could have worked out slightly differently because I would have really struggled for damage output into the Skeletor Dirge at the end of that battle. But fortunately, they didn't make that play. That's actually why I went for the Rock Slide to try to avoid being burned. So that's a battle showcasing how useful Doodle can be, especially if the opponent has some really good abilities. Another Pokemon with Unaware is Dondozo, and if you're able to Doodle Dondozo's Unaware ability, you basically completely ignore their commander boost from Tatsugiri and the opponent will only have one Pokemon on the field while you have two Pokemon and you ignore their boost so you're in a really really great position and they can't do very much to beat you there because slacking has recovery so yeah that's a really great position to be in if you are able to doodle the opposing Don Dozos unaware. The next battle is against a really cool team with some very interesting picks on their team they have a Vivion, which I think is a really cool support Pokemon. It has access to things like Rage Powder, Tailwind, and Sleep Powder. So that's a really interesting choice. As well as some other anti-meta picks like Haze Vaporeon is a really interesting choice. My opponent decides to lead with Vivion and Tinkerton, which is an interesting combination. It makes sense because they'll probably want to fake out and either Tailwind or Sleep Powder on this first turn. So that definitely makes sense and they fake out into my Grafai, which is great because as you've seen, Covert Cloak prevents the flinch, so I'm able to get the Doodle off, and I actually Doodle Friend Guard from the Vivion, which is great. What that does is it reduces any damage that your ally takes by 25%. Because both of my Pokemon now have this ability, it means that I have an across the board 25% damage reduction, which is really, really amazing and very valuable. Unfortunately, the Vivion is able to put my slacking to sleep, and I didn't have much counterplay to that, so that's pretty annoying. But I am going to try to reduce Vivion's speed so that I will at least outspeed with my slacking when it can eventually wake up and get some damage into it. The opposing Tinkerton goes for a Gigaton Hammer. I'm pretty sure that wouldn't have taken out my max HP Grafai without the crit, uh, but you know, things happen. This is the game we play, and Unfortunately, Vivion gets the Tailwind up as well, which means that actually the scary face was 
pretty much for nothing because um, the the Vivion will still outspeed my slacking. Right now, the Tinkerton does not have access to Gigaton Hammer because it used it last turn and you can't use it consecutively. So it actually goes for a knockoff into my Tyranitar, knocking off the Life Orb and the Vivion puts my Tyranitar to sleep, which is really annoying. I make a real misplay here because I go for a bulk up and really I should have just gone for damage into the Vivion, but I really didn't think that an unboosted facade would take out a Vivion from there. I need to get damage on this Vivion, but um, I, I, yeah, I didn't do any damage to it and it's just going to put me to sleep next turn. So that's kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, now, my Tyranitar is in a really awkward position because it's, uh, it has to take a Gigaton Hammer and I can't protect while it's asleep. So that's really annoying. But the Friend Guard on my Slacking means that Tyranitar actually survives on 7 HP, which is super, super tight, but it manages to do it. Unfortunately, Slacking gets put to sleep again. As I said, that's kind of the consequence of going for bulk up last turn. So that was a pretty bad play on my part. Um, but, you know, I, I made the decision. Then the opponent switches out their Vivion on this turn, presumably because they don't feel like they have a lot of offensive pressure here, um, and also because I've done some setup, so maybe they want to haze it away. They go for Faint into Tyranitar, and I again, I survive because of the Friend Guard. So Friend Guard is putting in the most work at the moment. I do wake up with uh, Slacking and get a, a Facade off, and I wake up with Tyranitar and get a Rock Slide off, and that Vaporeon just goes down straight away. I get a critical hit, not sure how much it mattered. It may have mattered because the Life Orb was knocked off last turn, um, but it was a very risky switch because I had burned turns of sleep with both of my Pokemon. Now Vivion's coming back out and they go for the feint. This time, Friend Guard can't save my Tyranitar, so it goes down and that's a real shame because Rock Slide into Vivion would have been very nice, uh, but the Vivion is then able to go for Sleep Powder into my slacking, put it to sleep again. This Pokemon is being so annoying. It's really showing off how powerful fast sleep is, which is something that this team is trying to utilize too with the Toad School Graphite combination. Uh, but yeah, Vivion just being a right thorn in my side right now. And also the sand uh, damage is wearing my slacking down a little bit. So now I bring in my Annihilate. I was a little bit hesitant to bring it in initially because I thought Hurricane might be coming out, which is not something that I wanted to take. The Gigaton Hammer comes into my Annihilate, which is kind of okay. It means that Rage Fist is boosted by one, um, so that's good. And I get the Facade off at plus one. The Facade is actually able to take out the Vivion from there. So the Bulk Up at least did something towards that end game, And I'm able to Bulk Up with my Annihilate. So now I've got these two pig monkey-like things on the field and they are just bulking up in front of the opponent. The Tinkerton really can't do much about that. I've already KO'd their Vaporeon, and their last is King Gambit, which is another physical attacker. So this is kind of working in my favor. Now I've got plus one defense on both of my Pokemon, and they've got massive HP pool, so they should be able to take some attacks here. My opponent is going to Terrastalize their, um, their King Gambit, which is a good play, because obviously I have fighting type coverage with Annihilate. So they want to avoid that super effective damage. They go for a knockoff and remove my Citrus Berry, which is kind of annoying because that would have been helpful. And they go for a Kowtow Cleave on my Annihilate and I survive again thanks to the Friend Guard. The Friend Guard just saving all of my Pokemon right now. That ability is so broken. And I'm so glad that I managed to give Slacking that ability. And I get another bulk up with Slacking. I go for a Drain Punch, get some recovery with my Annihilate, which is very nice. I'm now thinking that they'll probably go for a Sucker Punch into my Annihilate to try and take it out with the King Gambit. So I'm going to protect on that side. They actually go for a Gigaton Hammer into that slot to maybe try and take it out with their faster Tinkerton. Uh, but I'm able to avoid that. And they go for the Kowtow Cleave into Slacking, which is able to eat that up because it's plus two defense right now. Ridiculously high HP pool. And I can go for the Facade into the King Gambit at plus two attack. That's able to take King Gambit out from there, which is really, really nice. Now all they have is their Tinkerton, and it really doesn't have any damage output into either of my Pokemon. So that was a really cool battle, and another really cool ability that was copied. I had so much fun with that Friend Guard. I can't believe that it saved Tyranitar twice and Annihilate 
all because I copied Vivian's friend guard. So if you ever go up against Grafii, really consider the abilities that you're taking into that match because you might be giving your opponent a massive advantage. Now I want to show you some of the Toad School aspect of this team, although I have to say this was not as successful in testing. So I'll just show you a brief clip of Grafii going for Doodle, giving the Toad School Sand Rush in the sand so that this should be like the one of the fastest things on the field and uh, against the opposing Lycan Rock, Lycan Rock would outspeed, it does have a higher speed stat than Toad School so that outspeeds the Toad School but on the turn that I doodle you will also see that the opposing Tyranitar still outspeeds Toad School and it gets a Terror Blast off before Toad School can put it to sleep. So that's really important to note that on the first turn that you go for Doodle, the Mycelium Might deprioritization is still in effect. So even if you would be faster than one of the opponents, like I should be, I should definitely be faster than the Tyranitar there, um, it doesn't work like that on that first turn. So in, instead, a lot of the time I found myself going for Doodle and Protect with Toad Scroll so that I could overwrite my Celium Might on that first turn and on the second turn have that fast Toad School to put things to sleep. But that is just a really important mechanic to bear in mind with this team, that Doodle and Mycelium Might don't have the best synergy. Okay, so I'll show you one more battle with Toad School putting in some work. In this battle, my opponent is going to lead with a really cool combination of Bramble Gas and Talonflame. Bramble Gas has the Wind Rider ability, which gives it an attack boost when hit by wind type moves, which includes your own Tailwind. So this combination is very interesting because they can give that Wind Rider boost by setting up Tailwind on the first turn. I go for Doodle into the Bramble Gas to get that Wind Rider ability on both of my Pokemon. I could have done Gale Wings, neither of these abilities are really going to help either of my Pokemon out particularly, so I just went with Wind Rider for no real reason. The Bramble Gas goes for a Phantom Force, which is going to be very strong after that plus one attack, as I just go for a Spore into Talonflame to put it to sleep which is pretty helpful because that was a massive threat into my Toad Scroll. On this next turn, I don't have too much to do other than take a Phantom Force with my Toad Scroll, just about, it does almost all my health, and I'm able to go for a Super Fang into Talonflame to remove its uh, Gale Winged ability. I was thinking that Talonflame might switch out there because it's not doing much for the opponent while it's asleep on the field with Tailwind already set up, so that's why I went for another Spore. Now I go for Protect with my Toad School because I'm predicting the opponent to want to try to take it out as they do aim a Shadow Sneak into that slot and they don't get it off. Grafire eats a Flare Blitz which does a lot of damage but after the Super Fang the, uh, the Talonflame is looking really low and I can go for a Parting Shot into Talonflame to re reduce its offences even more. So that's pretty nice. The Talonflame isn't too threatening right now although it could definitely still take out my Toad School. I send out Annihilate, and Annihilate doesn't have the best positioning here because Talonflame has the super effective Brave Bird. I'm going to switch out Toad School because I think it could be useful later in the match, and I'll bring in Grafii because they might be going for another Shadow Sneak into that slot, and Grafii is immune to ghost type moves, so that would be pretty nice if I could avoid damage into that slot. I actually terrestrialize with my Annihilate, thinking that Talonflame will go for a Brave Bird into that slot. I'm really hoping that I don't see a Flare Blitz now, and I don't. So it's uh, it's a Brave Bird at minus one attack. It really doesn't do too much too much damage to my Annihilate, which is great. The Bramble Gas goes for a Phantom Force. I'm thinking that this is actually going to go into the Grafii slot, which will be really nice because Grafii will avoid any damage from that. It's a normal type, so it's immune to Ghost type moves. That will be really, really cool. I'm thinking that they were trying to get around my Toad School's Protect, so that's why they went for the Phantom Force. Now they're going to send out the Tyranitar. So Tyranitar sets up the sand, Steel type Annihilate will ignore any sand damage, which is pretty neat. Um, I'm going for Protect with my Annihilate, just in case the opponent is going to go for like a, a, the Phantom Force into the Annihilate slot. Um, I don't want to take a Phantom Force and an attack from Tyranitar. So they actually go for an Earthquake here, which I didn't really anticipate, and that's going to take out my Grafire. What I wanted to see is Grafire go down this turn because I wanted to bring in something else next to Annihilate to have much better positioning on the field. So now that Grafire has gone down, um, the Bramble Gas is taking a little bit of chip, 
and I can bring in Toad School again. Toad School's kind of low health. I still need to be careful about that Shadow Sneak. So I'm going to protect this turn as the Bramble Gas does go for the Shadow Sneak, but into the Annihilate, which is not what I predicted here. I'm going to go for Rage Fist into the Bramble Gas to take that out because my Toad School does not have good matchup into Bramble Gas. I've only got Earth Power and Spore really as my offensive options, as you could say, and neither of those will do it really anything into Bramble Gas. So I'm very glad I could take that down. The Tyranitar goes for an Earthquake. I was thinking that I might be able to take this with my Annihilate, but that does not happen. So this is a very strong Tyranitar. It's been it's been eating a lot of Cheerios in the morning because this thing is here to do a lot of damage, to do a lot of work. We've now got Rotom next to Toad School. This is our, these are our final two Pokemon. They're on their final two Pokemon. Really cool to see Houndstone in doubles. It, we know how broken it is in singles. You don't see it used so much in doubles and they're doubling down on this Pokemon as their kind of remaining threat by terrestrializing it, going for that ghost terror type and that thing will be doing a lot of damage with Lash Respect. It's only got two boosts, so it's base 150 power. That's still a ridiculously high base power move. With the Terra boost, it doesn't take out Rotom, which is so crucial because that allows me to get the Earth Power off into Tyranitar and the Hydro Pump, and Tyranitar will go down before doing any more damage this turn. The Sand is still up, so the Houndstone is still faster than both of my Pokemon. I need to be very careful about that. On this turn, it's a bit of a 50-50, but I decide to protect with my Rotom as I go for a Spore with my Toad Scroll, and Spore will put the, uh, it will put this Houndstone to sleep so that I can then double target it the next turn to try to take it out. If the opponent had called that Protect right and attacked into my Toad Scroll, um, then I would have lost the game. If I hadn't protected Rotom and, and tried to get the Spore off, I still would have lost because my Earth Power is not doing enough damage. So this was a really, really close game. Really, really fun. The Earth Power Special Defense drop definitely helped out there, but I don't think that it was uh, crucial because another either Earth Power or Thunderbolt the following turn would have won. So in that match, Toad School was so crucial for the end game, and I'm so glad that I kept it. Well, I say I kept it alive. I didn't keep it healthy. It was very unhealthy. It was in red health at the end there. But um, I really enjoyed using this Pokemon that match, and I really liked showing how the Earth Power was very strong. Just a note on this team: Grafii has very poor matchups into a lot of common Pokemon in the current meta because it's Prankster, so its Doodle will always go first, but all Dark types are immune to Prankster moves, which does include Doodle. So that means that Murkrow, Hydreigon, King Gambit, all of these Pokemon that you see relatively often will not be affected by Doodle. Also, anything that changes form, such as Mimikyu or Palafin, you can't copy their abilities, so Doodle will fail. And Goldengo is also immune to Doodle. So there are like a ton of Pokemon that you can't Doodle. There are also Pokemon that block priority moves. So Armatail from Ferrigiraffe, Serena's Queenly Majesty, and also Psychic Terrain from Indeedee, all of these will block Grafiai's Doodle too. So if you run into like any of those three matchups or teams with a lot of dark types, teams with a lot of Pokemon that change form or the abilities that you can't copy, then you don't want to go with a Grafii mode. You want to really focus on Toad School supporting some of your setup sweepers. That's something really important to note. Try out the team, let me know what you think. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content like this. I've got some really fun teams coming up, so definitely subscribe if you want to see them. But that's all for today. I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.